on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. It's 837 coming up in 30 minutes. It's the Chris Plant Show. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Mercedes Schlapp. Mercedes, we've got Julie Hi. Kelly here. I know. I'm so excited. We love her. She's from American us. Greatness, of course, author of January 6th, How Democrats Use the Capitol Protest to Launch a War on Terror Against the Political Right. And boy, uh, I mean, I, you might have to do a rewrite of the book now or maybe have a whole new book about what we're oh, learning about how that committee functioned. Uh, Julie, great to talk with you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. And Larry, just to um, I started my own sub stack. So I would like to refer people there for all my coverage and work. Oh, fantastic. Do, oh, do give us the details. Yes, it's called Declassified with Julie Kelly, and it's on Substack, and that's where all my reporting on both cases, Jack Perfect. Smith's uh, cases against Donald Trump and DOJ corruption in general, can be found. How did I not get that memo? All right. Thank you, it's Julie. Okay. Great stuff. It's okay. It's okay. You're good to chat good. with you guys. Thanks, Thanks for so, having me on. So here's how the corporate media is describing this, if they're even covering this revelation out of the January 6th committee. Here's how they're covering it. And I, I assure you this is very different of how you'll hear it reported at Declassified with Julie Kelly. Um, the January 6th Select Committee, listen to this euphemism, failed to adequately preserve documents, data, and video depositions, including communications it had with the Biden White House, uh, in accordance with proper evidentiary policies failed to adequately preserve julie isn't that the same thing as basically destroying throwing out deleting all of their evidence how is that possibly legal yeah that's a nice little washington dc euphemism for we destroyed and got rid of the evidence that was certainly exculpatory yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, if not, you know, revelatory about what the law enforcement, security and intelligence failures were on January 6th. Now, what's interesting, and this has been controversial for a while, this was the blue team. So they had different teams assigned to investigate different aspects of January 6th. The blue team was tasked with investigating security, intelligence, law enforcement failures. Well, before the report was issued, it was delayed a number of times because the blue team was fighting Liz Cheney, who wanted to make the entire 837-page report about Donald Trump. And they actually right. wanted to talk about what they had found out. Instead of making that a feature of the document, it was buried in an appendix. So this is why the committee has buried it. They've now destroyed evidence because they don't want the American people to see that this was largely an inside job, number one that the security was intentionally lax and don't and they don't want reporting about government assets or undercover agents or informants tied to various agencies who were on the ground what they saw and and you know the truth about uh, January 6 instead of their made up narrative that Donald Trump incited it with his speech at the ellipse well, and my understanding is that the J6 select committee, like they, that the special counsel, Jack Smith, as, actually took a lot of their information. So it's, they took this one-sided information so that Jack Smith could help build his, ca his case. Is that what, what you've heard? Mercedes, that's spot on. When I read the indictment, I actually said this is a cut and paste job from the January 6th select committee report. There's very little n new uh, details in that 45 page indictment from Jack Smith. I mean, I think I was posting actually snippets from the report and passages in the indictment that were almost verbatim. So, um, but uh, also keep in mind, Liz Cheney and Benny Thompson and Adam Schiff promised the American people that all the information, including the interview transcripts, would be made available to the public. There are still hundreds of missing interview transcripts. If you go to the January 6th Select Committee site, now of course the committee's disbanded, so you have to go to a government archive to look. Yeah. There are hundreds of transcripts missing, including Bobby Engel, the one who was driving the limousine, remember, that Cassidy Hutchison said? Trump tried to strangle him in the car, leaving right. the ellipse, trying to get to the Capitol. Right. That transcript still is missing, and I'm sure we'll never see it. And, and now that we have federal charges against Donald Trump uh, brought on by Jack Smith uh, in relation to the events after the 2020 election leading up to January 6th, I would think that a lot of that testimony, uh, the testimony that helped make the case against Donald Trump on this uh, taxpayer funded committee, 
that would be exculpatory. That would be evidence that the defendant, former President Donald Trump, uh, would really want to have access to to make his defense. And now it's gone. I mean, will, will a federal judge get to step in here? Or is this one of those cases, Julie Kelly, where Congress can just say, oh, we're above the law. We make our own rules. If we want to delete evidence, we have every right to. I mean, I'm sure that that's the argument that the Democrats will make. And, you know, there's not a judge in Washington, D.C. that will hold Democrats to account. That's not how they operate. They're a rubber stamp for DOJ and Jack Smith and the Democrats. So they actually will get away with it. So, um, you know, they will. And in fact, before you make that next point, I I want to sort of because I don't want to lose lose time with you. Let's talk about those judges, because uh, you have this story where a judge uh, talk to me about this subpoena of of Donald Trump's Twitter account and how they claimed that he was a flight risk. <laughs> you know, the only thing with the yeah the Jack Smith um, prosecution of Donald Trump is the American people are going to finally see what I've been watching in this DC court system for the past two and a half years. Y- you cannot believe how dirty they are, how secretive they are, and how dishonest they are. So you have that both Jack Smith and Beryl Howell, who was the chief judge and Obama appointed judge. She is really the villain in all of this January 6th prosecution because she has signed off on sealed orders we can't see, piercing attorney client privilege, forcing uh, a subpoena for the surveillance video at Mar a Lago, and now this grab of Donald Trump's Twitter account, Twitter records. So both Jack Smith and then Beryl Howell said, according to this appellate ruling, this is the only document we've seen, by the way, we haven't seen all the other back and forth, is that Donald Trump was a flight risk. That's why he couldn't know that uh, they had subpoenaed his records from Twitter. Absurd. Is, it, it's, it's shocking. Absurd. Because don't you think that, yeah, the defendant should, normally in a legal case, you know, the, the yeah. plaintiff will subpoena the documents, including the social media of you know, of of the defendant. And they did it in the most secretive of ways with the most bogus excuse. Based on a lie. Based yeah, on an based absolute on a complete lie. lie. Julie Kelly, stay there. We got more for you. And, the, and we're, you know, up against our, our format here. So just hold on. We'll get more from Julie Kelly in a minute. I'll... Declassified with Julie Kelly is the sub stack you want. I just subscribed to it. And you should, too. That's where you get all of her independent journalism and reporting. And uh, we, we left it off there with this uh, Jack Smith thing uh, where they, they claimed the reason they got this secret subpoena to for and Twitter, by the way, was uh, very hesitant about handing over uh, access to President yeah. Trump's DMs. The federal judge fined them over three hundred fifty thousand dollars to force them to do this. And now they claim Julie Kelly. Oh, oh, that claim that Trump was a flight risk. That was an error. Is that really what they're saying now it was all a mistake, <laughs> but they got what they wanted, didn't they? Of course. And this is, uh, again, the only document we've seen about this case is the appellate court ruling that supported. So get this. You had two Biden judges, an Obama judge, three judge panel on the D.C. Circuit, the appellate court, upholding another Obama judge's decision to force Twitter to turn over um, Donald Trump's Twitter records to Twitter at the request of Joe Biden's special counsel. And yes, it is Joe Biden's special counsel. Make no mistake, there's nothing independent about. This is the sort of legal judicial, I call it circle of hell, that January 6th defendants have been dealing with for two and a half years. I mean, this they have they have taken social media accounts. They've forced big tech to turn over, whether it's Google, Amazon, Twitter, Facebook, to turn over deleted social media accounts to the government. So they can use social media posts and messages as evidence against January 6th defendants. This is nothing new. But of course, the fact that they were so sneaky and tried to keep this from Donald Trump and this judge allowed them and uh, and kudos to Twitter because they actually were fighting the non-disclosure aspect of this. And Beryl Howell Mm -hmm. charged, punished Twitter $350,000 for a 51 hour Two and a half out, two and a half day delay in producing, finally producing the documents. Yeah. The punishment was not the delay. The punishment is because she is a Democratic hack who did not like that Elon Musk took over Twitter and was opening it up as a free speech platform. 
and was then involved in exposing in the Twitter files Twitter's collusion with the Democrats and, of course, you know, the FBI and the government Mm -hmm. to suppress information. She was punishing Twitter not for being late in producing the documents, records, which, which, of course, they did. She punished them and said, well, you're, you just bought Twitter for $40 billion. You're worth $40 billion. You can afford this fine. Unbelievable. That's, what she said. Wow. That's wow. justice in America right Unreal. now. Julie Kelly, we got to leave Jeez. it there. We appreciate all the work you do, and uh, there's, there's more. We're just scratching the surface. That's why you want to subscribe to her Substack, Declassified with Julie Kelly. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.